breaking news. Canon adds a never before seen feature to their new shutters. Sony is raising the prices on their gear. I'll tell you whether it applies to you. Micro Four Thirds is getting a feature that they've needed for so long. And we're taking photos from space. You can take photos from space seriously. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you're taking pictures in space or on Earth, you need a Squarespace website to make sure all of your work looks as beautiful as possible. Get started today at squarespace.com slash Tony. You get a free trial. Set it up, just see how you like it. It's perfect for photography or video work, but it's perfect really for any type of business. If you want to put your best foot forward online, you don't use social media. Use your social media to get people to your website where you can take orders from clients. You can set up appointments, get deposits, you can share work directly with clients. If you can imagine it, you can do it with a Squarespace website. Once again, squarespace.com slash Tony. Coupon code Tony gets you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. First, big news for Micro Four Thirds users. Interviewing one of the heads of Panasonic, he revealed that at least they're looking at adding phase detect autofocus to Micro Four Thirds. This is big news because the most important cameras in the Micro Four Thirds space are the video-centric GH6 series cameras. And in our last review of the GH6, we thought it was amazing. The stabilization, the video quality, the lens selection, all excellent. But it really fell down when it came to autofocus. And nowadays, we all kind of expect to be able to just step in front of a camera and have it focus on us. Like, the $900 Canon RP that I'm filming this on, except you really can't do that with your Panasonic Micro Four Thirds cameras today. We recently reviewed the Panasonic S5 Mark II, and it did have phase detect autofocus, and I could step in front of the camera and it would film me. It worked pretty well. They're still not quite caught up to Canon and Sony, but moving that feature down to Micro Four Thirds would be a big deal. I'm glad to hear they're open to it. I'm still not convinced that they're going to continue dividing their efforts between full frame and micro four thirds. I think at some point it makes sense to focus all of their energy onto a single platform and I think full frame would be the right platform for that. In other news, Canon is adding haptic feedback to their shutter buttons, at least according to a recent patent. Now we've all used haptic feedback even if you didn't know it because your smartphone when you tap on the screen and you feel it bounce back a little bit that's haptic feedback and haptic feedback can be so subtle and so convincing that my iPhone had a home button remember when phones had a home button but if you shut that phone off it would literally do nothing and you realize it was never a button but by simply pushing back with a little motor it could fool your fingers into thinking a button was real and Canon wants to bring that power to the shutter button in conventional cameras, specifically because so many modern cameras are operated in totally silent mode, because we don't have mechanical mirrors and shutters as a necessity anymore. You can take pictures completely silently, but then you don't feel when you're taking pictures. And as somebody who shoots with a Sony A1, 30 frames per second, that means I can accidentally take 30 frames, and that's a lot to sort through. And my camera will flash, on the screen, but my eyes are focused on the subject, so it's easy for me to overlook the box that it draws around the periphery, and I would like some haptic feedback to let me know that I'm taking pictures and how many pictures I'm taking in those silent situations. So I think it's a solid idea, but I do want to use this opportunity to pitch an idea I've had for a while that I really need, that every wildlife sports photographer, every action photographer needs. We need the shutter button to act more like the throttle in a car, like the gas pedal. If I push it gently, take pictures at three to five frames per second. If I really slam it all the way down, go ahead and give me my max frames per second, 30 frames per second, 120 frames per second. The reason for this is right now, we have to go in and select a setting or move a dial in order to switch from low speed to high speed, high frame rate photography. But if you're shooting a sports game and soccer, somebody jumps up to get a header, you'd want to be shooting that at 120 frames per second or 30 frames per second, whatever the fastest you could, because you want that moment of contact, right? 
But then moments later, when somebody's celebrating a goal, you don't want to waste all those frames per second, nor do you want to go into your camera and change a setting. Simply allowing the shutter button to be operated like a throttle would save so many wasted frames, allowing us in real time to choose between different frame rates. Please, somebody provide that for me. We need it. In other news, Sony is raising their prices in Japan. Some outlets are suggesting that they're starting in Japan, but they might be raising prices worldwide. And if that were the case, well, that might be the impetus you need to go out and buy something now as the prices are lower. But Sony's actually raised prices in Japan before, and here in the US, we didn't actually see any price increases. I think what's behind this is the weak yen in relation to the US dollar and the euro. Sony, as well as Canon, Nikon, Olympus, Panasonic, pretty much all the popular camera companies are all based out of Japan. They are Japanese corporations and their native currency is the yen. If other currencies are more valuable in comparison to the yen, that's actually generally good news for them since they sell so much of their gear in the US and in Europe. That means that a camera that costs 2000 US dollars is actually reaping them more profit because they're converting everything back to a less valuable yen. So having a weak yen can be good news for Japanese companies. But if the yen is weak and some of their supplies and material are outsourced to other countries, that might mean that they might have to raise the prices within Japan. So I don't think we need to panic. Another reason we might see raised prices is simply inflation. There's been massive global inflation, especially in the last year. Prices of everything have gone up, homes, gas, eggs, and it would be no surprise if gear prices did go up. Now this has not really happened in the past. They would launch a camera with an MSRP and it would only ever go down. And that's because as technology, it generally becomes less and less expensive to make over time as technology improves, things become more efficient and that rate of improvement has outpaced inflation. But today inflation is growing so fast that it is probably outpacing that depreciation of the equipment. Now, in Nikon news, they announced open pricing in Japan. Generally, camera manufacturers do not allow open pricing. When you go to B&H or Amazon or Adorama and you buy a piece of gear, they probably all have exactly the same price for any new equipment. That's because the manufacturer specifies the retail price. They're not allowed to sell it for a different price. If they want to undercut the competition, what they end up doing is they bundle like a backpack and some filters or something in there so it seems like you're getting more. By opening pricing in Japan, retailers should be able to sell it for less or even more. For example, when the Nikon Z9 was being produced in too small numbers to meet the current demand, people were buying them at MSRP from camera stores and then reselling them sometimes uh, at twice the price. You know, they could make $5,000 in profit in those first few months when you couldn't get your hands on a Z9. Now the profit that that camera reseller was making could be booked by the camera store. So obviously that's good news for camera stores and camera stores might be able to compete on price by lowering the prices below the MSRP when a camera is in sufficient supply. So that might actually be good for the consumer. I think open pricing is generally beneficial to us. Now let's talk about taking photos from space. There are two new services opening up that will allow you as a photographer to take pictures from space without building a 10 mile high tripod. The first one and less interesting one is SkyFi. SkyFi allows you to buy existing satellite photos like those you might see on Google Maps or Google Earth but basically licensing that to use it however you might want to use it, whether it was for a piece of art that you were going to print or put it into a movie or a TV show or maybe you're doing uh, real estate photography. But they also allow you to request images of a specific location on a specific day. So you can't say, oh, come take a picture of my house at 6 p.m. because I'm going to be mooning the satellite. You, you can't get quite that precise, but you could pick a day and then I guess you hope that there aren't going to be any clouds that come over your house. You'll have to actually like carefully plan around the weather. That's up to you. And then it could happen at any point during that day, probably because 
the satellite needs to, you know, fly over your region before it can take a picture. And it's not like uh, Uber, like you can't tell it where to go. It's just circling the earth really fast. And at some point it's going to pass over your location and they'll snap that picture for you. The prices seem pretty reasonable for custom satellite photography. Like it's pretty amazing. You can control this camera in space and get images. I think most of the users paying for this are probably going to be commercial users rather than artistic users. It takes a, a bigger area than you could possibly get with a drone. So I don't see this as directly competing with drone photographers, even for things like real estate photography, because the view is so wide, real estate photography wouldn't ever really use that. Right now, places like Zillow just link to Google Maps anyway, so they don't need a custom image. But it can be useful to get that satellite image uh, up to date because maybe you just built a house this month and you want the satellite image showing that house or the new road and Google Maps might be outdated. I think the far more interesting service is Sony Star Sphere, which put a Sony camera with a 28 to 135 millimeter lens in space, seriously orbiting the Earth. And you can log in and you will get a time slot, like maybe it's 10 minutes or so, when you can control that, you can tilt around, you can control the composition. And because that 28 to 135 is a power zoom, you could zoom in or out. You could capture the curve of the Earth or you could point it towards the Earth and zoom in and get some amount of detail. I think this is so exciting and so cool. I've always wanted to go into space. And of course, as a photographer, what I'm thinking is, Oh, I want to be able to take artistic images from space. I want to be able to control the composition. And now I do not have to risk my life or put on a spacesuit to be able to do that. I really, really want to use this, but it does not work. I've seen this covered in the news so much, and they all link to the Star Sphere website, but it does not work. When you and click the Become a Crew Member link, it takes you to the Japanese site, and then if you click it again, it just keeps cycling back to the same site. It simply doesn't work. And I reached out to my contacts at Sony who are always very good, very responsive. And they just kind of shrugged and said, mm, I sent your note along to Japan, but Japan didn't get back to me. So this doesn't seem like a real service. I don't, I don't think it's real. They announced it at CES and I think maybe they wanted something to announce, but I don't, I don't think this is real. I would love to be proven wrong. So Sony, like, give me a call because I really want to take some pictures from space. If this is real, I will happily advertise it for you. In the comments down below, tell me whether you like that haptic shutter or not, or what else you'd like to see in the next generation of cameras. Tell me if you want to take pictures from space and check out our sponsor, Squarespace at squarespace.com slash Tony. Get started with your own website, perfect for personal projects, for businesses, or your portfolio. I have like five or six. You know why? Because you need one that's focused on aerial photography, another that's focused on wedding photography, another that's focused on real estate photography. You don't want one website for everything that you do as a person. You need to divide it up a little bit because your clientele needs something simple and focused to those demands. And that's why everybody should have multiple Squarespace websites. And yeah, I'm serious. I have five or six myself. Get started at squarespace.com slash Tony. Try it out completely free and your pictures will look beautiful. You can pick from many different templates. When you love it, the coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. Thanks Squarespace. Bye.